What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another video. This is day two, day three of being in the new shop, and boy, it feels good. Have a lot of really cool stuff to show you today. Have a lot of updates to show you guys. One off bat, we're able to fit the trailer in the new shop and tuck it into that little nook. We didn't think that we'd be able to put the trailer there and we even talked about it. Right off the beginning, I wanna show you all the new cars in the warehouse space because seeing all this come together and seeing how much space in room we have is extremely exciting. Now I'll go walk through all of that and give you guys a closer look. But as you can see, the NSX is already back on a list and we are trying to get this moving as quickly as possible so we don't have any delay in any of the NSX episodes because I know we're so close to finishing it. I think right now Dylan is working on the front end. In the last rebuild episode, we started putting on the front bits, the front hood, and we actually noticed the whole entire core support or the cross bracing was a little bit bent. There's more than that. Is do, it? Do you want to see it? Yeah. Real quick, just super simple. See how flat this is right there? And then see how flat that is right there? Yeah. And then all these seams yeah. are not separated. Rolled out, bent down, separated. So I'm pulling everything off just so I can kind of give it a little hammer and dolly, little love taps here and there, see what we can get out of it. And then same with this one. This is kind of rolled out versus flat. So I'm just gonna kind of try and massage this back to where it was. The thing is, is that it's it's pretty minimal. It's tiny, it's tiny little things that only affect the alignment of the headlight and the hood latch. Yeah, that's, you can see really it, didn't, it. it didn't go past this either. Cause now that you point that out, you can kind of follow the rest of the seams yeah. and see if there's anything that's buckled or isn't completely flush. Yeah. And it looks to be localized pretty much this area, which is, I don't wanna say it's good, but it's, yeah. it could be a lot worse. Just a little bit of love. So now that we did that, or we're gonna do that, then we can align the headlight buckets a lot better, align the hood latch a lot better, actually get the bumper to line up, actually get the bumper to bolt up how it's supposed to in these holes, because we'll just pull that And you can see bit. they're kind of walked a little bit. So once we do that, she'll be t t taters, titties? She'll be tits. T is, that is that appropriate? Taters. I say it every time, you look like Mr. Krabs without a shell with no beard. Hey, <laughs> good, 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 good boy. I'm trying to decide if this should be bay one or main bay. If you look at it, right, you have bay one, two, three, and four, and we don't count the four car storage as a bay because that's just storage, not working on it. We're trying to decide where we're gonna film most of our videos. Maybe you guys could have a little input on this. Give us your suggestion. Typically, we, we had the idea that you could actually flip the car around because these lifts are symmetrical, which means the weight is 50-50, not divided into the first third and the second third, if that makes sense, which essentially means you could put the car on frontward or backward and the weight distribution is gonna be over the middle and it's gonna be the same amount of room no matter what. Cause this filming shot looks pretty great. We have a lot of open space here. Uh, let me know you guys' thoughts. I'll show you bay four in just a little bit, but how do we feel about bay one? It's kind of cool cause you can see the rest of the cars. It's personally my favorite. In the same, is it? Yeah. Just cause the view that you get from the entire front to the back of the shop is so cool. It's kind of a vibe. But one thing that we're really, really proud about, I know Dylan spent a lot of time kind of critiquing the exact layout. Although these four lifts are pretty, I don't wanna say squished together. They might look really tight on camera, but when you're in between both the lifts, there's actually a good amount of walking space. And we were very, very cognizant of making sure that with all the stuff we're gonna have on the walls and the tools, that you'd still have ample amount of room to walk around each car, and that you would have enough space between each cars that let's say random friends are in town or like the Connecticut boys are in town or the Florida boys or Grant is here or whatever and they need a lift and everyone's working on a lift. You'd be able to literally be here on a lift, removing wheels, working on certain sections of the car and then the person on the next lift could be like over on the same side and you guys wouldn't be bumping into each other and you wouldn't be crowding each other. The fact that we have that much space and there's that much usability is really cool. And having the cars on the lifts for the first time kind of got to prove our like recipe. Kind of got to prove our theory and it works. Engine hoists too. You engine hoist, you could easily put an engine hoist in here. And then if you didn't, if the car was extra long, you could just turn the car around and then you could work like, so like if we're doing like an engine build or an engine swap or something, just turn the thing around and you have all this space. And I don't think we're gonna be putting any storage on this wall. So it's always gonna be empty, it's always gonna be clear. So there's just so much room. Going on to bay number four, there's no car on it because there's that much room. We haven't filled it yet. Now, I do have quite a few things coming. If you follow my Instagram, I kind of sometimes blow my load a little bit on Instagram. And if you follow my Instagram, you might know what I'm talking about. But there's a lot of stuff coming very, very soon that this will have a nice home for. My biggest happiness thing, I don't know, the coolest thing, this four car stack. It's a cluster of happiness. Yeah, 
Ramayas 14 that you guys might be like, oh my god, I forgot you had that. Or TJ, weren't you trying to sell that a while ago? I was, and I backed out. I was only getting rid of it because I didn't have space for it, or I was like trying to sell it. But now that we have the space, I'm kind of like, I'm just gonna keep it. But seeing all these together makes me feel really good. I am gonna bring the M4 home, and I'll probably bring my white FD, so it's just all like a JDM Google collection. But seeing all that feels really good. the inside of the whole entire office and I'm really taking my time because I want it to be super super special and nice so this is the front room it's kind of like the lobby area so I got all of my trophies and checks and like first place qualifier stuff and I think we even have this is an LZ deck that was from first place on the knockout round which is pretty cool so having all these trophies up is a really cool thing to see like right as you enter in. I've had these all just sitting at home in my office. So I brought that stuff. Like I went through my whole entire office at home and over just the last like 10 years of doing car stuff, I've collected and have stockpiled just a bunch of really cool stuff that either you guys have sent me or I've just collected along the way. So I'm gonna use some of that to decorate all these offices, but I know that we're gonna have like a couch here and like a little like that coffee table for a couch is like just like a, a spot to sit, but I'm thinking about bringing my racing sand that I have at home that I never use because my Wi-Fi is so bad. I have Starlink at my house. No, there's no other option that work in my house. There's not good Wi-Fi. So I don't really drive my sim that often. But I think I'm gonna bring it here and place it in this corner. We'll see if what ends up happening. But I went furniture shopping and got desks and mirrors and all that stuff. You'll see in just a sec. All right, listen up everyone. Are you trying to make some cheddar this upcoming Sunday? Because I know I am. I got my underdog fantasy lined up and this is your opportunity to have some fun and make some fresh cheddar. Underdog fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. All you gotta do is pick higher or lower on your favorite player and they have to perform. If they do that, you can win big money. They also have different stuff like golf and hockey and pretty much any sport that you can think about, but football's the most fun to play. You pick between two and five players to build what's called a pick 'em entry. If you get all your picks right, you can win up to 100 times your money in one single game. They're also available in 30 plus states, including California, Texas, and even Canada. There's a new customer special with Patty Mahomes, Kermit the Frog himself. All he has to do is go over a total of one yard. It's pretty much a gimme. You can't miss it. And right now, if you you guys use my code and download underdog you can get that new special promo now I'm not gonna give you advice on what to be picking here but I have four different slips out with a bunch of different opportunities so just in case I have one pick that goes the wrong way I got backups but seriously I have been using underdog fantasy for a very long time I've gotten really into this game and all of my friends and family are now playing and we are all sharing our picks almost every weekend. And to top it all off, if you guys download Underdog and use code HUNT, they will double your deposit up to $100. So if you put in $100 and you use code HUNT, they're gonna give you another $100 so you can go all in on the big game. Now that's up to you, that's not advice. But new customer special, and they'll match you up to 100 bucks. You can't go wrong, click the links down below, scan the QR code, get locked in, and good luck. Good update on this room, it doesn't look as naked. This is uh, a couch from like the Hunt Co. office that we brought in here. This is gonna be like the lunch room. So there'll be a TV mounted here and like a, a lunch table thing here. We've made a lot of improvement on my office. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is gonna be like a conference room. I'm gonna do a really big wallpaper print of the Mark V Supra drifting. So stay tuned for that. It's gonna come soon. This is Anthony's office. You guys kind of saw that looks really good. I had to one up him because he can't have a better office than me. So, all right, let's, let's, let's see who's is better. Welcome to my office, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this. Got some nice furniture, painted some walls. I got a real plant. I got a nice desk, but I brought some stuff from my house that is really cool. Um, like I have this little like Nismo section. That's just like bits and pieces of like, this is an R34 GTR original catalog from 1999. And this a Nismo radiator cap, Nismo, S-Tune, spark plugs, oil caps, gas caps. 
This is really cool. This is a cigarette lighter. Put it in and it's like a little like Nismo turnkey. It's cool stuff. If, if you know, you know. Some Gander doors on display, an old set of hockey gloves. One of you guys sent me all of this. These are 164 scale R34 Skyline. So this is a midnight purple two one. This one's really special. I have a Millennium Jade one. I have an active red R tune. Ooh, very rare color. And then a couple like cool ones, like this one's really cool. Cool livery and a Hot Wheel from Mad Mike that he gave me and he signed it, so I put that in here. I have a bunch of Hot Wheels and stuff I gotta put in here, but I thought this little collection of Skylines was really rad. One cool thing I wanna show you guys that I think is so cool. When I was like eight years old, that's when I got really introduced to cars and that's when I became obsessed with cars. So this is like 2003, 2004, around that timestamp. Back then there was no YouTube and when you wanted to go online, there was really no place that I knew of as an eight year old where to look at cars. So I used to go to this website called fantasycars.com and I printed this binder out and obviously it's TJ's awesome cars. It's, it is what it is. And inside I would print out pictures of cars that I liked. Look at that. Look at the way he's dressed. That is exactly what you would think a Celine Mustang owner would dress like. 997 or 996 GT3 cup car. And these are just like old photos. And all these are dated. Look at that. 2003. And this is how I would like learn about cars. And on some of these, there's like blog posts that they would like write about. Here's photos of me when I was like eight years old going to the exotic dealership in my area and just like taking photos in front of cars. Pretty cool. 996 GT3. Apparently I liked that car a lot back then. I meant I purple too. Skyline, that's crazy. Is that my car? Maybe. This is really special. I've kept it all these years and it means a lot to me. And this is like literally what ignited my passion for cars. And people are like, how'd you start learning about cars? This, so I have that in display in my little cabinet. The best thing about this Ford truck is that there is a horizontal and flat surface in front of the steering wheel. So it makes the absolute perfect vlogging setup. We have a few things to go and do today. And this is just the real life of setting up this shop while everyone else is like tinkering on the cars and trying to get everything back to normal and play catch up over the last week. I am getting everything else set up and getting the logistics of Hunt & Co set up and all of that good stuff. And some of that means moving furniture from our house. So Anthony and I are about to go pick up two couches and try to fit them in this truck and bring them back here. I'm also very excited and I'll show you more when we get to the Hunt & Co side of this video. But Hunt & Co has not made a drop or has not released anything in almost like two and a half months, hence the last giveaway. Part of that is because we knew we were doing this transition to the new space and trying to release more stuff and get orders out on time is just not feasible. But we're going to be releasing a very cool drop and it is called the Hunt Quarters Drop. If you guys have not been watching this channel for more than a few years, when I originally moved into our first shop, it was deemed the Hunt Quarters and it was kind of just like our little Instagram page and it kind of just got coined that. And we're bringing that back with this new space because it's ours entirely and it houses everything and it is the HQ, it's the Hunt Quarters. And we have a special drop coming for that. Here it is on the screen, I'm so hyped. I wanna let you guys know that is gonna be dropping February 16th, that's a Friday at 10 a.m. in the morning. I'm letting you guys know now so that if you do want to snag something and support the new move and support the, the first drop of the year, it's going to be very special. I am hyped on it. Set your calendars. It's cool. It's classy. The building matches on the design. I'm really excited about it. I think it's very cool. We're really trying to spread our wings a little bit more this year and some of the biggest pieces of feedback we got last year was we love what you guys are doing, but I wanna see more variety. I wanna see different style of t-shirts and jackets and the hoodies and t-shirts and the hats we're doing are great, but different colors, different garments. Oh, is the camera gonna fall? Oh. Is really important. And I'm gonna be, I'm trying to listen to you guys. And there's a lot of cool stuff coming this year that is different than what you've seen in the past. And it's my goal this year. I'm saying it now, we can clip this and when it happens, we can go back to it, but the goal this year is to get Hunt & Co in a store. I don't know what store, I don't know where, I don't know how. I don't know how we're gonna do it, but Hunt & Company belongs in a storefront. I'm gonna make that a goal this year. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but remember this clip. It's gonna happen in 2024. First stop, get a couch. Both legs. Look at that perfection, brother. Yeah. Woo -hoo -hoo. Lord, baby. Look at this. Look how tight that is. Looks like this truck was made for this. <laughs> so 
Just, just being a little goofy. <laughs> Stop number two, second couch. Hold it there. Honestly, we could just go like this and literally like that. Oh, I lost a sandal. All right, so we're thinking one couch is gonna go here. We still gotta move some stuff around. Another couch will go in the hunting call room. Oh, check this out. I've been saving and framing all of the first serial numbers of all the 300 stuff, which is pretty cool. That's so cool. I only have like the first four cars because then it got like, when we got to like car six, seven, eight of different kits, it got too much to like save 001, but I have the FD RX-7 001, Supra 001, another Supra 001, that's for the stock body kit, uh, Toyota GR86 001, pretty cool. I'm gonna hang all those up somewhere. And then this is really cool. There's a magazine called Pass Mag and they did a Street Hunter spread like a couple years ago and I just got it framed. Pretty cool. Still a work in progress. I feel like I've said that a million times. We got the couch in, hung up a few more things on the wall, added some Street Hunter stuff. I think I'm decided. We're gonna bring the racing sim right here. I think it's just gonna fill up this room and it's gonna help balance it out. I'm gonna show you this, but Tuan, don't get too close because I don't want them to really yeah. be able to make anything out. Yeah, yeah. This is probably the room I'm most excited about. This is the Hunt Co. design room. I came in this morning and put a little bit more effort into it, but I've had this vision to have these big cork boards. These are like cork board walls that I got. I pretty much have the whole entire year mapped out. And as you can see, we're going into February, March, and you're not supposed to really be able to see this. That's why we're keeping it so far out. I don't want to give everything away, but I'm starting to add all these other ones and place it out so we can get summer and winter and spring all mapped out while there's giveaways being included. And that's something that I've never had before. I've always wanted to do. And I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again, 2024, I'm really, really gonna focus as much energy as I can in the Hunt & Co because I have so much fun doing it. And obviously I like making stuff that looks cool and it's also really cool when you guys get it and you know, you're hyped on it. But the design room got some love today. Makes me really happy. This video has been filmed over the past couple days. There has been some progress on the NSX and I'm hoping that we'll have a dedicated NSX video starting next week, but there's been a lot of progress. In the beginning of the video, we kind of showed you a lot of this frame. Dylan has made everything straight. Everything is crisp and where it's supposed to be. Panels are lined up that were never lined up. He's done an amazing job. One thing that I thought was so funny that I really wanted to show you guys was the radiator. Now, I don't know if it was Ian or Dylan who found this, but I have never seen this before. And again, this just goes to what we were saying. People in the beginning of the series were claiming the NSX wasn't really that bad and we were fluffing it for videos. And we were like, dude, you guys have something loose in your head if that's what you really believe because we can't fake how bad this is. I have never seen this before. I'm sure some of you guys have seen this before. When you run your finger across these fins, let me see, turn it, I'm gonna turn up the ISO so you can really like get a good glimpse of this. Oh, did you, just, did you just see it flick up? You're doing it wrong, dude. The fins don't bend, they just collapse and break off. Wow. Truly one of the worst condition cars we've ever had in here. Now, before we end this video off, I'm gonna show you what Hunt Co. looks like. Again, we're still like a few weeks away from getting everything to be perfect. I say a few weeks away, but we're gonna be dropping the new Hunt Quarters drop next week. But to be like where I'm super satisfied and for having to be like perfect, we're still a little ways out, but to see this progression, feels really good. We've started to add the racks and we're starting to build the layout of what we wanna do. It looks like a controlled mess and that's because it is, but there's just so much stuff that needs to get organized and put back into place. And we've changed the, the aisle design layout so many times and we're trying to really maximize the space. I haven't said this in this video yet, but as of yesterday, I got approval from the contractor to build the wall. There's gonna be a big wall right here that's gonna separate both sides. Again, just to make sure it doesn't get too dirty. You know, when you guys order clothes, I don't want you guys to be like, there was a pile of carbon buildup from the rotary that was running and have it go on the shirt and ruin the garment. We obviously don't want that. So we kind of have some stuff spaced out because really the wall's gonna be built right down this faint line and it's gonna run up all the way to there. So we'll switch the lights like that, move them a little bit, and then all these boxes will get pushed up against the wall. Give us a little bit of space, allow us to add another rack on all these shelves and it kind of makes the flow work a little bit easier so we'll have smalls mediums xl double triple uh, i think i missed the size and all of that but it will all flow and it will all work out very well which i'm excited about i think that this will be the last update video with the whole entire shop because you know we still have some things coming 
We still have the lever rack systems sh to show up. We still have our compressor to show up. But as far as us really adding new things and filling up the space with cars, we've kind of done it. And it has been a very exhausting three and a half, four weeks, but we're here. So thank you guys for watching these videos. I know you guys enjoy them, which is why we keep making them. And this is all I'm gonna say. We have an insane lineup coming this year of cars I've purchased that I think are, last year we did a bunch of really cool stuff that I feel like it's gonna be tough to beat, but this year I think we're gonna push the limit and kind of what we said last year, the M4 was kind of just the beginning. We're really gonna push ourselves to get into some projects that typically we would deem too difficult or too scary. I'll leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and turn on the post notifications so you get updated every time we upload a new video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out and keep moving forward.